they say a wise man learns not from his mistakes, but the mistakes of others. And you're a fool if you make the same mistake twice. But I also tell you that sometimes you got to make the same mistake twice for it to really stick. Mm. You know, d- depending on how impactful that mistake was, you may get it the first time. But if the mistake wasn't as impactful and it was just a little slap on the wrist, mm-hmm. you might forget. I've made some mistakes that I've repeated. And the second time I repeated, man, I got I got crushed. I, I, I got crushed. Them niggas scared to make that move. We can't relate to that. I roll the dice. Shit, if I lose, I'm gonna be shaking back. Cause lessons learned within the loss. Just elevate the fact that trial and error just the only way. Ain't no escaping that. I wake up, hit a hundred push-ups. Then I'm at my route. Check on my stocks. See how they looking. Then I'm sliding out. When you start seeing your progression, you stop having doubts. And what's the point of having clout? You can't cash it out. True to this game, but number life, hey. Feel like we finna change the cycle, ayy. That's the most success, you know we thriving, ayy. That's the most depression for our rivals, ayy. Could teach a lesson on survival, ayy. You know I'm from the bottom. What's good with it, my wealth builders? It's your boy David Bellard, one of the founders of Black Wealth Renaissance. Here with my brother Jalen. What's good, dog? What's popping with it, man? How you living doing good, today? Living good, living great, man. It's pod day. You already know how it goes. Hell yeah, man. I Excited. Took a little break in between. Energy Got some stretching going, going, you know what I'm saying? I ain't even do my stretches. See, you're, you're, you're I know I'm fucking up. You're not going to be mentally I was, I was sharp. I walking around and everything. Okay, all right, all right. Yeah, yeah. And I ain't full of the tequila and liquor today and shit, <laughs> so I'm good. <laughs> Yeah, like, hey, yeah, you yeah, right. Last right. time that shit was whipping my ass. Yeah, that boy was getting lie. bluesed. But nah, um, doing good, bro. Glad to have you back in Dallas uh, so we can continue to rock out and keep giving people value for season yeah, five. Yeah, man. I definitely um, miss the city already, man. Uh, you should. It's much better than Houston. But that's neither here that's nor there. Uh, <laughs> so, y'all, as always, y'all know we got another great installment of the Black Wealth Renaissance podcast coming for y'all. Before we get into introducing our guests, make sure y'all leave us that five star rating and review. Need uh, it. We definitely need that. Continue to push out some great information to the people. Now, the brother that we have on today, y'all done seen him before. Big probably, bars. Probably one of your favorite episodes of the Black Wolf and the Sun podcast. Somebody asked me what was my favorite episode. Phenomenal. And I actually said it was this one. Sensational. <laughs> <laughs> because this brother provides a lot of value real genuine guy <laughs> out of chicago came up here last time giving y'all all the game in the blueprints yeah, yeah. so i'm glad to have an opportunity to catch up with him uh he's taking off into some new business ventures providing value in all those different arenas none other than that guy mr eugene marshall gene what's good brother what up what up what up man i appreciate y'all for having me back it's definitely been a pleasure hey man uh, it's good seeing y'all cats man i know we was kicking it crazy uh over the last couple of years and so uh definitely feel good to be back in the building we definitely gonna build for sure oh yeah man great to have you back my dog oh yeah glad to have you back in dallas for a little bit yeah last good time i saw you you, man. you had the uh you had the braids the dreads yeah, man. last time i saw you yeah man yeah new 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 styles you, you know switch the game yeah, you, gotta, you gotta get six c sync on us yeah. yeah you know so it's been good man That's so good. What's, what's been new with you man i know you uh recently started your tax service yeah um what brought you into that lane you know what um I've been just so intrigued with the, the financial space for so long. Um, and I remember in college, I got my degree at, at Northern Illinois University. I got a dual degree in um, IT and operations management. I didn't and, know you had a dual degree, nigga. I thought yeah, it was just IT. Yeah, I had a dual degree in operations Smart management and IT. Fucker, yeah. um, and I was just trying to figure <laughs> <laughs> I was trying to figure out, you know, because that's right around the time when I started actually reading the rich dad poor dad books and like getting more educated in the financial space and i was trying to figure out at that point like damn how do i make the shift how do i make the 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 change but i was already in like my senior year and it was kind of like you know i can't really change majors or pick up a minor look you you change majors you gonna be here for a while you're gonna be here for a while so i was just thinking like all right well how can i leverage the it side to maybe get work get at a bank you know uh Cause I figured once I get in the room, once I get in the space, I figure the rest out. So I was trying to work that angle, but um, so I always had a tenacity or was intrigued by the by the financial space, and um, that led me to the real estate. And then ultimately, when I left my job, uh, my corporate job, I already had enough cash flow coming in on the real estate side of the fence, and I got bored. Right, mm-hmm. I, I needed something to do. I needed something to really 
um, keep me busy, keep me active, and I wanted to stretch. And so I ended up joining forces uh, with, with a buddy of mine and started helping him out with his tax firm. And that's how I got in the tax space. And I've always been in sales, right? Always, always been in sales and uh, was operating in a, in a sales capacity. And um, last year, I generated over half a million dollars in, in, in gross sales Jeez. selling tax plans, wow. you know, selling tax plans to individuals and small businesses and being able to articulate the value on why tax planning is so important, you know, is, is, is not that hard to do. But I tell folks all the time that, you know, selling a half a million dollars in tax plans is one thing, but actually delivering on the savings is what's really important. Mm -hmm. Because a lot of people talk about, oh, my business gross X, Y, Z, or oh, I did this, but how many people actually did you help? You know, because you, you got a lot of benefit out of it, mm -hmm. but did your clients receive more benefit? Did your clients pay less in taxes than exactly. they would if they didn't have you If around. they didn't have you, absolutely. And so that's what led me to the tax firm, man. Um, like I said, I, I did over half a million dollars in, in tax sales without a license. Hmm. Without a license. But that's because I strategically, immensely studied the tax code, mm -hmm. right? So that I could have a full and thorough understanding of what it is that you can do what and what mean? it is that you can't do. And I tell folks all the time, if you really, really, really want to build wealth, you, you got to understand taxes. That's or you got to have somebody on your team that does. Mm -hmm. Because we're limited, bro. We can't know. We, 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 you can't know everything. That's a fact. You know, so whatever it is that you lack, build it or, excuse me, bridge the gap in between by outsourcing it. Mm -hmm. Right? Or build a relationship with somebody that does. And so that's how I ended up getting into the space. That's dope. I didn't, even, I didn't even know that was like a role that people were doing was just like, you be just my salesperson for the taxes. I mean, that makes sense. Like, it does. In, in all businesses, you need sales. It does, sure. but in, in the tax point, it's like, it's such a necessity. It's like, you gotta get it. It's like... There has to be an education level, right? So you can't just be like, I'm good at selling and not know nothing about taxes. Exactly. Because you need to still be able to explain something to them mm -hmm. that, to where it's going to apply to their situation. So it's not like you're just any other regular salesman. But I did, Gene, you said something there that I wanted to go into. It's one of the talking points I had. It's about wealth and taxes, right? So, like, you just said it there. Mm -hmm. You can never truly build wealth if you don't understand taxes. For sure. Can we get into that some more? Yeah, bro. Like, it's, it's a pivotal moment in your wealth building journey, right? A lot of people spend most of their time and energy focusing on how to generate income. But they never spend no time, energy, or money figuring out how to save income, right? You should be spending 10% of the money that you make on saving the money. And the only way to do it is if you tax plan. Mm -hmm. What happens is with most people, you know, come January, December, January, February, that's when they start looking for an enrolled agent or a CPA or a new tax preparer to file their taxes. But you, you, you actually a tad bit behind, mm -hmm. you know. The tax savings, the huge refund, if you will, that comes through the tax planning where we can talk about how we can leverage deductions that fit your lifestyle. Mm -hmm. But not only just fits your lifestyle, but also fits the business model because everything got to make sense. Yeah. Because that's certain ordinary deductions. Ordinary and necessary. Right. It got to be ordinary and necessary in the pursuit of income. Right. Because there's certain things that Jalen may be able to write off as right. a logistics business Right. If he owns a truck versus stuff that, you know, David may be able to write off in, in the real estate space. Mm -hmm. So we got to understand when and how we can leverage certain deductions based on that business. Mm -hmm. So when we plan throughout the year, we can meet quarterly. Most of my clients, we, we meet quarterly. I do have some clients that meet monthly as well. But that's when we really start diving and say, oh, let's do this. You know what? Now, nah, let's actually put that on a shelf for next year. Mm -hmm. Right. Because we got to know at what point. Should we take certain deductions? And and I was just talking to a buddy man about this last night at the bar. And people, millennials in, in, at this stage of the game um, with social media, I mean, social media is really like disrupting a lot of shit. Mm -hmm. You know, there's a lot of good information out there. And there's a, a lot, lot of terrible information, information out, out there. there. You got to be careful, man, with who you feeding. You know what I'm saying? Or oh, excuse me, who, who you who's who, feeding, who's feeding you? you? Yeah. 
You got to be careful with who's feeding you, man. Got to be careful what you're consuming. And I saw somebody on social media um, this past week. Huge following. Huge following, dog. And they're telling people to go out and get business credit. Right? Don't business the credit. Don't say to buy a G-Wagon. Bruh. Not the G-Wagon. It's even worse than the G-Wagon, in my opinion. They tell them to go get business credit. So they can afford the Beyonce tickets. And I then know write you it a off. motherfucking lie. And write it off. Boy, oh, shut the fuck up, dog. And write it off. I'm telling you, man. I'm telling you. This is fucking yeah. ridiculous, bro. They tell Are folks, yes, go get, go get big, go get a business line of credit. You can go to this site, right? And this is how you can afford the Beyonce tickets. And you can write it off. Now, now the write-off part, we we could probably figure that out how to how to how to how to get, you know, write that one off. That's well, come stressful, on. bro. Come on. Like, that, bro. that just stressed me out. <laughs> Time out. Yeah, pause. Flag on the motherfucking play, nigga. Oh. What? Yes, bro. Like, how how can you say you want to help the community feeding them that type of information, right? And once again, we, we had the conversation earlier with another guest was understanding that if you're going to do it, do it within reason. But don't go get no fucking business funding just to go to a concert. It's stupid. Because how Literally. is that going to make you money? It ain't. It ain't going to make you no money. It's going to give you an experience that's going to last an hour. I want an experience that's going to last me a lifetime. Mm -hmm. Right? I want an experience that's going to outlive me. And a way to do that is to find deductions that can fuel my future. Not a deduction that's going to make me happy for an hour because I get to see Beyonce. You're talking that shit, man. Because he was he was upset about the G-Wagon shit. And it's something that definitely irked us too because it's like, once again, you're telling people that this is one of the best deductions you can get, you know, buy you a vehicle with because it's 6,000. Like la yeah. This was the last year they could yeah, do yeah. it, right? Like, you know, 6,000 pounds. But it's like, there's so many more things that you can deduct that would be so much more beneficial to you. Now, if, if you have, let's say you have a business where that G wagon is, you know, necessary, maybe a car service, or you're, you know, you're working with high net worth clientele, you driving them around and stuff like that, that that's understandable. But if you're just getting it just to write it off, to not pay uncle Sam, now you're putting yourself into a hole where you actually, you're not paying uncle Sam the money, but now you bought the vehicle. Now you got to pay, the bank, the money to, for, to, for uh, the damn loan. And you yeah. wrote off 100000 the whole thing. So now you also made it harder to qualify for funding. Exactly. If you didn't have that revenue to justify spending $180,000 on a car. Exactly. You, 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 you fucked. You know? <laughs> to be frank, yeah. To be frank. And so we got to be very careful, man, with who we are allowing to feed us information. You know? Mm -hmm. And again, that's why I'm a big proponent of finding deductions or leveraging the tax code in ways that can fund and fuel my future. Mm -hmm. Instead of buying a G-Wagon, go buy you some cash flow, right? Instead of going to the Beyonce concert, go max out an HSA, right? There's plenty of things that we could be doing other than doing that. Or, or you go buy you some cash flow and use that cash flow to go to buy Beyonce. Get yourself in position. You might gotta sit down. You, you might gotta sit down this tour. You can't I make this tour. It ain't gonna be the last one. It won't be the last one. The last one might be t the, the next one might be ten G's or fifteen G's, but you've already created that system that continues to pay you over time. Where now you can go without having to trade your time for money, mm -hmm. right? And that's a whole nother topic. But we gotta understand the full wealth cycle. We got to understand the full wealth cycle and the tax component, bro, is everything. Because whether you like it or not, the one thing that we all got in common. We're going to die and we're going to pay them taxes. You're going to die and you're going to pay some taxes. That's you a might, fact. They're going to come get your ass. They go, if, right. Or they're going to come get you. So you might as well hire somebody that, that, you can, that you can trust, that's knowledgeable, that can coach you, train you, and educate you throughout the process. Mm. So what makes you that person that they can trust? Uh, I know the designation that you got, but explain that. Yeah, bro. So, you know, I'm an in-road agent, right? I have the highest federal designation from the IRS, 
right? So enroll agents, we specialize in understanding the tax code, mm. right? And not only that, but we we talk about how we can leverage the tax code specifically for your lifestyle, right? It's all tax strategy. On the on the other hand, with CPA, it's a question I get off quite often. What's the difference between a, a CPA, a CPA and the enroll agent? Mm -hmm. Well, a certified public public accountant. They're focusing on, on accounting for things in your return. They're very good at tax preparation, right? EAs, and there's, there's some CPAs too, but EAs, right, that fully understand the tax code, we're really trying to figure out how we can leverage tax strategies, right, to fit your lifestyle to ultimately minimize your tax liability. Mm. So a lot, of, a lot of my clients, they come over to, to me from you know having conversations with their CPA and I'm educating them on things that their CPA haven't even told them, mm. right? But I say, hey, look, go to your CPA and tell your CPA this is what you need done, right? You, you spoke with Eugene. Eugene gave you the strategy. We'll type it up for you. We'll write it all out for you. And then we'll get you a nice packet that you can go over there to, you can go over and take to your CPA and tell your CPA, here's what I need to account for in my tax return. Or better yet, if you want, you can just stay here with us. Right. And we'll do everything for you. Mm. So now you have a one stop shop where we can tax plan. Right. And we can get you in position Planning for tax preparation. preparation. Mm. That's that's where the magic happens, bro. And that's why tax planning is so important. You got a tax plan, especially if you own and operate a small business. And if you don't own and operate a small business, you're, you're still a great candidate for tax planning. So I know we mentioned the tax planning and you kind of said that tax planning is throughout the year putting together what's going to be expenses for your business that are ordinary and necessary. So I kind of want to get into some of those things that we don't know about the tax code that we don't leverage. Right. Cause I think I read it somewhere. It's like the tax code is like 260 odd pages, something like that. And the first 10 pages are about how to pay taxes and the other 250 is like how not to pay taxes. So what are some of those things that, small business owners miss that you can give an example of bro i mean the the easiest one i mean it's 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 so it's so simple so easy and like i said i t I, I like what what are the deductions that i like uh fuck deductions that fuel your future oh i thought you were talking about that specific one we talked about no, no 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 yeah, yeah. okay okay the, deductions that fuel your future deductions that fuel your future the easiest one, bro, is it's the easiest one. If you're healthy, is an HSA, health savings account. Mm. It's the easiest one, bro. You know, some people call it the, the triple tax threat, right? I call it the quadruple tax threat. Why you, you call know? it quadruple? Here's why I call it quadruple. You get a deduction for contributing to the plan. Uh, from right? your business? From your business. Okay. Or, or even if you work a W-2 job. Right. It lowers your taxable income from your, your W-2 job as well from your salary. OK, so you get a tax deduction for contributing to the plan. Mm -hmm. The money grows tax free. Is, the, is it because it's tax whenever you first put it in, right? No, 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 no. no. It's a tax deduction. It's, you get a tax so deduction. Pre-tax. Okay, pre-tax, okay, okay. pre right? Now the money grows tax free. Mm -hmm. I'm getting tax-free growth on the money. I can invest the money in the market. The money is growing now, right? Not only that, the third one, I can spend the money on qualified medical expenses, mm -hmm. right? I want to go get some new glasses. I want to go get some new glasses. Um, I got to go get, uh, I got to go see my hygienist and get, get my, my teeth clean. Or I'm getting veneers or perhaps you're traveling to Turkey and you, you, you want to get a hair implant like Akon. Right. Like there's things out there that you can that you can get a deduction for that you can actually use in the future, because whether we like it or not, we're, we're, we're if it, man, look, keep living, keep on living. You're going to have some medical expenses, That's whether we like it or not. The body going to deteriorate. So you might as well invest in your body. You might as well invest in your health and get a tax deduction for doing so. Because and uh, Jalen made this point before, too. We often discount that when we think about getting older, like having uh, that money off a side. Imagine you get older, you need a major surgery. You didn't had mm. this money you've been putting away since you was 20, growing tax free. Mm. That surgery, not a, a financial burden on your family now. That's deep. 
Because them surgery shits, it's not cheap. It ain't. It ain't. So that's the third one, right? Qualified medical expenses, right? Especially for the women, right? You know, you, you guys need pads. With all those things. Just pay for it out of this. Pay for it out of your HSA. That's tax-free money. It's tax-free money. You was going to buy those things anyway. That's smart. You was going to buy it anyway, so you might as well buy it with money that was never taxed. So the fourth thing, right? We talked about three. Do I need to recap the three, or we can go straight to the four? We can go to number yeah, four. We're going straight to number four. It's supplemental retirement income. Supplemental retirement income. So when you when you at age sixty five, now you can spend the money on whatever you want. You ain't gotta just spend it on medical expenses. Oh wait a minute, I did not know yeah. that part. You don't have to spend it on just medical expenses. You can spend the money on whatever you want. Is so if you like want to go a travel, minimum distribution or something like that, or like they do like how you know, like like Roth IRAs. IRA, yeah. Like after you get a certain age, you start you have to start taking it out, or is it just that you can use it for whatever? So with the Roth IRA, there are no RMDs. Okay, right. With the traditional IRA, there are RMDs. That's what it is. Gotcha. Right? With a Roth 401k, there's also RMDs as well. But on the Roth side of the house, there is no you RMDs. You can actually leave it to air. You can leave it. Same okay. thing with the HSA. Gotcha. You can leave Same an HSA thing. for air? Same thing. I did not know that. Same thing. Same thing. Ideally, you want to cash it out. Mm. Right? You use it for whatever, depending on your situation and how you set up. Mm -hmm. Would the air be taxed on receiving the HSA? That's a great question. That's a great question. Will the heir be taxed on receiving the HSA? So if the money was never taxed and the money gets passed down to someone else, okay, now, would it, it depends. Now, was this person at age 65 when that, that HSA turned into a retirement account? Mm. Or was they under, under 65? Mm. Let's, let's say they were over 65. If they're over 65, or does it matter? No, oh, at this me. point. Because it's, <laughs> it's just the same thing as, a, like, that would be like inheriting a Roth IRA at that point, essentially, right? Exactly. Well, not a Roth. Well, a traditional, a tradi in a sense. Because okay. remember, the Roth is after tax contributions. Mm -hmm. Got you. Okay. Right? This is pre tax contributions. So to be taxed. Got gotcha. you. I got you. I got you. Okay. Thank you for that. Thank you for that. Uh, let's see. It's another uh, part of, so we got the HSA. What's another good way to utilize tax advantages while also, you know, fire, what, how you say it? Finding fueling, deductions fuel, that fuel, fuel your freedom. Yeah, fueling your freedom. Finding finding deductions that, that fuel your future. Future. The other, the other one, bro, this, this one is, this one is, is like, this is the one that gets a lot of folks. This is the one that gets a lot of folks, bro. I got a client that was generating over a half a million dollars in revenue as a single member LLC. They still was listed as just an LLC? As Boy, a single member LLC. They was on them taxes. As a single member LLC. Now, this is not even a, this is not a deduction, though. We talking just a, a, a uh, tax election, mm -hmm. right? Just changing the way that you get taxed. Bro, he was paying so much money in self-employment tax. Because what you got the 15.3% and then on top of that, it's a he, he made 500000 So that means that full five hundred was taxed on him personally. What tax bracket that is? That's like 37%? So you damn near paying 52% yeah. of your income in taxes? Bro. Do you, do, you, do you know how quick we shifted that client from a single member LLC to an S Corp? <laughs> I'm pretty sure the second he told y'all, y'all was like, give me that form. What is it, 1120 S? Yes? That's the tax form, mm -hmm. right, that we file taxes on. Got you. Right? The form for the conversion is the 2553 form. Okay. That's the form that we leverage for the conversion. Mm -hmm. And as I'm talking to this client, I'm asking, okay. How long have you been generating a half a million dollars in, in, in revenue? You know, how much did you make last year? I made 600 last year. So you made more than you did last year than you did this year? Huh. You got a copy of those returns too? 
yeah, I got to copy those returns. Okay, send it over. Let me, let me and my team analyze the return. You know, I, I feel like it's, it's some money on the table for you. So what a lot of people don't know and don't realize is that you can also backdate your S-Corp election as well. Mm. Yeah. You can backdate your S-Corp election. So he uh, had his business. Like limited by a certain amount of years? Three years. Three years. Three years. So you can go as far yeah, back yeah. as year three. Right? Or the, excuse me, the last three years. Mm -hmm. So it's 2020, 2021, 2020, 2019. 2019. Right? And we can backdate and say, hey, as of January 1st, 2019, Jalen Clark LLC is an escort. Mm. Of course, we would have to go through the work of amending the return and, and doing all of that. But at that point, it doesn't matter. How much money will that save you? Because there's so much money on the table. That's the easiest thing. But a lot of people don't. And, and with social media, again, right, everybody pushing. To, that was another thing that was hot with the, the G-Wagon. S-Corp, 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 S-Corp. But a lot of folks don't really talk about, you, you know, some of the. Revenue to have exactly, the revenue, sense. the maintenance, you know. The process to be doing in the, in the business. Mm -hmm. and what you have to be doing in the business to make sure that you are I in think, compliance. I think you gotta actually uh, take, you gotta be paid through your business once you do escort. Absolutely, right? absolutely. You, you paid on payroll. What else it is? Uh, you gotta file like a corporation with the state in a sense, right? Mm -hmm. You gotta have your meeting minutes and all this other stuff. Absolutely. Uh, and then each state is different, if I'm not mistaken. Right? Absolutely. Absolutely. The first and here's where folks go wrong with the, with the S Corp, right? Here's here's where a lot of folks go wrong. They overpay themselves. They overpay themselves. Right? When you have an S Corp, all you have to do is pay yourself what is known as reasonable compensation. Mm. Right? Reasonable reasonable compensation. No more, no less. And with the the, the terrible information that's out here, you got folks that are operating as a single member LLC running payroll for themselves. You shouldn't be running payroll for yourself as a single, a single member LLC. LLC. Yeah, you can do distribution. Because, exactly, right? When you're a single member LLC, what you pay yourself is the net profit, mm -hmm. right? Which is known as owner's distributions, mm -hmm. right? But, again, with social media, we got, man, run W2 payroll, run, run W2 payroll. And you got some folks to get an R escort because they hit the button on the uh, Secretary of State website, but for they web, didn't file, but they didn't file the, the form. It, and so they're running payroll. I'm glad we're having this conversation again right now because this is something we said, Carter said to me once, and I, it stuck with me. Experts are expensive, but doing amateur shit costs you a fortune. Mm. The problem with social media, I think, is, and I, I, I'm be on this campaign all year because I think niggas need to hear this. Stop trying to learn everything in a fucking minute, bro. Thinking that you're going to learn everything from somebody in a minute. So, Pay an expert. Like, whenever you're giving this information out, right, it's like, okay, great. Gene told me the form I need to use. He told me this. Oh, I can go figure it out on my own. Stop doing that shit because there might be another nuance in it that we didn't get an opportunity to discuss that you should probably talk about with somebody who's doing this for a living. I, I just always got to stress that because I see, like, people, they get so caught up on, like, the the G wagon craze or like file an S court, but it's like okay, but do you really know what you're doing? Right. Like, do you really know? And if you don't know, spend the money with somebody who does. And that's the reason why I knew that the difference between the distribution and actually paying yourself is because we paid somebody to teach us this shit too. Like, nigga, we had to get with a CPA that could teach us this shit. You gotta know the game, dog. And I want to build on what you just said. You know. Um, People, people in, in this day and age, man, they operate with a microwavable mindset. That's facts. You know, they want instant results. Popcorn head. Yeah, they want instant <laughs> results. You know, they want to listen to a podcast today and go flip houses tomorrow. But it don't work like that. Wish it did. You, you got to put the time in. And there are certain things that an episode is not going to be able to fully give you. Good. There are certain things that you know, reading one book is not going to fully be able to give you, mm -hmm. you know. And also, too, people in, in, in this space, they, they only give you enough information so that you can reach out to a licensed professional. Right. 
That's the whole marketing piece to everything that the we do. The game is sold, not told. The game is sold, it's not told. So there's certain things that people specifically say and don't say because they don't want you to go out there and try to do it on your own. Because you might fuck it up, to be honest. Because you might fuck it up. You At know? the same time, as I also had to work for this credential, so why not utilize what I have? You know why? Because everybody still want to go to their auntie and uncle that's been filing their taxes for years. On <laughs> TurboTax, doing it wrong. You know. My mom used to be a family tax person. I said, really? Mom, you, you, that is not your job. <laughs> yeah, she used to do everybody taxes. It's crazy. Everybody had that one, one, one person in the family that was just doing everybody's taxes. You know, there's one person that was there that did taxes. And I tell folks all the time, at some point, you got to graduate from that. At some point, you got to get around folks that can offer you more than just doing your taxes. Because filing your taxes is, is that's almost like, I mean, somebody in, in a it's community, like a, not even a high a school, test. Can, can, can file taxes. All I got to do is pull up the software, mix and match the numbers on a W-2 form, and be like, okay, that go there, that go there, that go there. Line here, go Line here, here, line here, go there. Address done. State. Right? But the magic, bro, is, is in the planning, man. Where you can plan with somebody and they can fully understand what your financial picture looks like. Mm. You know, because not only are we talking about how we can save you money on taxes, but then it opens up the conversation on what to do with the money that we save you. Because we don't want you to just go blow it, you know, on travel. Although we do, we do want you to use the money for whatever you want to use the money for. But we want you to allocate it correctly, Right. Maybe we can save you some money and you can leverage the difference to go fund something that can fuel your future, mm. right? You might not get a deduction, but it can fuel your future, your future, right? Like the Roth, right? Why not? Max it out. Why not max it out? You got the six, might as well put it there because whenever you're older, you ain't paying taxes on it. It's going to grow tax-free. And not only that, we still in February, so you still got the opportunity to contribute to your Roth from 2022. What up, time out. What you mean? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. So although we're physically in 2023, you can, you can still contribute to your Roth from 2022, the mm -hmm. 2022 tax year. For how long? For how long is it? You can do it until the tax deadline, April 15th. Really? Absolutely. I did not know that. Absolutely, bro. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You have so you really April have 15. damn near 16 months to max out your IRA for one year. When you think about it. When you think about it. Damn. They give you an additional four months going into the next year to max out your Roth. Last year was 6000 This year 6500 Right? So we, we got to just start thinking. We got to start thinking. There's somebody listening to this podcast right now. You probably got a Roth. Well, you probably don't have a Roth, but this is a great opportunity for you to open one up. Put a portion of your, of your income tax refund in there, right? And let that thing systemize and grow for you. Get some compound growth. Just, just invest in the index fund. Don't do That's all it. the compl complicated shit. Just keep it simple. Just keep it, just kiss. Simple. That's the best acronym that keep I learned. Keep it simple, stupid. Keep it simple, stupid. I love the moment that, that you start to try to complicate shit, you 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 in all these discords and they talking about doing these swing trades and doing all of this, bruh. Pump your brakes. Pump your brakes. <laughs> right? Statistically, the, the data shows the folks that buy and hold beat the traders every day. Beat the traders every day. Because the average person has no business trading. They have no business it's no even, business trading. Even uh not even average person, hedge funds. Oh, I think over the past twenty years they have there may be one or two hedge funds that actually have outpaced the growth of like the S and P 500. So it's like, why again, why make it complicated? You don't need to know how to be an option trader. You don't need to know how to swing trade, all that stuff. You get the Roth, make it passive, keep it simple. Buy, settle the Roth, go to your brokerage, buy a fucking spy. Spy -vu. Same shit. Same shit. VTI. VTI. Can't go wrong. Not at all. That's some game. Just saying. Y'all look up those tickers. Bro, it's the, it's the easiest way. And, and, and here's one thing I, I want to I say, too. I like boring money. I like boring money, man. 
Say that. Say that again, man. I like we need boring to talk money. about it. You know, what's boring money, Gene? I, I like I like I like the money that just works, right? The shit that's been working for the last 50, 40, 60 years. Mm-hmm. You know, I'm not trying to get overly excited about a new opportunity. I want to I want to do what's always been working. And we know the S&P 500 works. We know buying index funds work. So why waste all that energy, time, effort trying to research each individual stock and trying to learn options trading? I, I've been there. I done did some options. I done hit big. I done lost big. But I've always won just holding. You ain't never lying. Oh, I always won just like holding. like 17% for the year already. I mean, like I even, say, even this past it? week in the stock market, right? Like a lot of companies was beat down. But this past week, shit went, shit went up. Like just holding at the end of the day, you're going to get the benefit because you own it. Mm-hmm. If you sell it, you made the money. If you you hold it. You go. You own it. Like you can keep it forever. It, we don't. Who's to say that? Like right now, we're in a little downturn. But five years from now, everything might be five x from where we at. So, just keep it simple, man. You know why I also like boring money? Because the, the other money, we can call it excited money, right? It's typically something something you're doing on impulse. Think about it. Most most people. Invest on on impulse. Most people spend a lot of FOMO on impulse, a lot of FOMO, right? And so I, I like the boring money, bro, because I'm balanced. I got a clear mind about what I'm contributing to. I got a clear mind on what I'm investing in, mm-hmm. and I'm not being sold on this grand opportunity. Now there are some grand opportunities that really do exist, but at the same time. You gotta be prepared for that shit too, though. You gotta be prepared. You gotta be prepared, and you gotta be early. Like uh, going to a conversation earlier, talking about like the NFT thing, right? When NFTs was exciting money, everybody was talking about it. A lot of people got burned because it was supposed to be this new, flashy, shiny way to take ten dollars and turn it into ten thousand. And it's like that worked for one or two people in the beginning, but as time went on, it's not sustainable. Mm. And like. Because it's not maturity in that market. But like you said, the boring money, that's the mature markets. I know that if I put in X, I get out Y. Done. Leave a headache, lead a headache on the shelf, dog. Lead a headache on the shelf. Don't don't overcomplicate. Don't overcomplicate. Keep it simple. And that's why I buy real estate. Hmm. Right? And that's why I buy and hold my real estate. Because yeah. I know I'm gonna win in the long run versus me trying to keep doing a bunch of fix and flips. That's crazy. Makes sense. And, you know, we, we didn't even mention it in the intro with the real estate journey because, like, I think we talked about the first episode. If y'all hadn't heard that first episode, I highly suggest y'all yeah, go back yeah, go and listen to out. it. Like I said, one of my favorites. But you were able to amass, like, what, 30 units before the age of 30. And that's a feat, bro. That's yeah. a major feat. And so with your real estate journey, one of the questions I wanted to ask you uh, was what was some of the lessons that you learned along that part? Man, look, um, I'm – they say um, they say a wise man learns not from his mistakes but the mistakes of others, and you're a fool if you make the same mistake twice. But I also tell you that sometimes you gotta make the same mistake twice for it to really stick. Mm. You know, I, ideally, you know, d- depending on how impactful that mistake was, you may get it the first time. But if the mistake wasn't as impactful and it was just a little slap on the wrist, mm-hmm. you might forget. And, stove um, wasn't hot enough for that ass. The stove wasn't hot enough, bro. And um, I've made some mistakes that I've repeated. And the second time I repeated, man, I got I got crushed. I, I I got crushed. Repeat the question again. So, what were some of the lessons that you learned, man? So, the biggest lesson I've learned. In, in real estate that I can apply to every business venture is you, you really got to truly vet out the people you do business with. You know, um, you, you got to vet out the people that you do business with. And you, 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 you got to look at their characteristic traits, personality. You damn near want to know what, what their money habits is, right? Their perspective on money, how they view things, what their relationship with money is like. Because all those things determine 
how they're going to treat your money. Mm. Mm. That's, right? That, that's that's facts. And I don't I don't want to I don't want a motherfucker treating my money not not the same how I'm gonna treat it. In most cases, folks not gonna treat your money how how you gonna treat it anyway. But I want a nigga to be, I want the person to be damn close. You know, we gotta be financially compatible. We gotta be financially compatible. And 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 here, check this out. It's easy to think that somebody is financially compatible with you by their materialistic things and what they have. Mm. It's so easy to think, oh, this person got a fly car, or oh, this person got. You know, a house over there, a house over there. He he or she must know how to manage money well. And a lot of times that we can get caught up in who somebody else is, we forget who we is. Mm. We forget how equally important we are. And we get off our system. Mm. And systems is not just meant for businesses. It's for life. It's for life. The systems, world operating systems. The world operating systems. That's what this book right here is teaching. Systems is is what you do in your relationship. Systems is what you do in the gym. Systems is what you do at your house when you wake up. A routine ain't nothing more or nothing less but another word for a system. Right? Another and so word for habit. And another word for habit. And I had to realize, bro, that um, everybody don't operate on the same system as me. Mm -hmm. And um, the biggest, that's the biggest lesson I learned is that you got to fully vet people out. And don't get blinded by what they got going on. Because it's so easy to do that. That you get so blinded by what they got going on that you put yourself second. Or you get off your system. Mm -hmm. To get on theirs. To get on theirs. Right? Oh, give me an example, Gene. What you talking about? I, I'll give you an example. So, um, I drove an hour to to meet meet with somebody. We just, this happened rather recently. I drove an hour to meet with somebody. Um, and the only reason why I drove an hour to meet with them was because of who they was. Right? And so, the person reached out. He said, hey, let's talk. Let's connect. I said, cool. Let's do it. You want to chat on the phone, via Zoom, or in person? Typically, I'm like, let's talk on the phone or via Zoom, right? Because we can we can still exchange and we can conduct business and we can get stuff done without having to physically be there. Mm -hmm. And so he responds and he said, let's do in person. But I only added in person because of who he was, right? I drove the hour. I drove the hour. I got there. How long do you think we talked? If I'm driving an hour someplace, how long do you think the, the meeting? Yeah, I probably talked for about three, four, three, four hours. hours. Yeah. Two, four, three, four hours, right? Y'all probably talked for five minutes. Don't tell me that. We talked for 10 minutes. Oh, no. We talked for 10 minutes. Do you know how much money I could have made in that hour? Do you know how much an hour of my time is worth? I could have made fifteen, twenty thousand dollars $20,000 in an hour. But I spent that hour driving to you for a 10 minute conversation and I had to relearn to don't get off my own system and my system is hey let, let's jump on the phone real quick if we're gonna meet in person let's I, I want to know you know what are we talking about before then yeah what, what are we talking about but I got so caught up in who that person was and who that person is that I let go of my own system. And it's the same way with investments. Somebody that you know may have this going on, that going on, that going on. And you see what they doing working for them. And you see what they got going on working for them. And when they present an opportunity for you, you get off your system. And when you get off your system, you're not even asking the right questions about the investment opportunity no more. Because, because you're going solely off who that person is. Think about that. This real life, right? You 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 invest solely off who that person is. Of course, you ask some questions, but you're not asking the right. But you questions. ain't asking the right questions. You're not asking the same questions if it was somebody that you didn't know presented the opportunity. But the fact that you know this person, and this is a person that is 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 of of statute, you get off your system. 
And so the best and the, the best lesson that I learned, bro, in business is to follow your system, stick with your system, and make sure that whoever you do business with has a similar system hmm. to the way that they do business, to the way they operate, to the way they think, to the way that they treat others, and to the way that they communicate. Their business that's, has that's, the that's same the, values as your business. We got to we got to have some we got to have shared values. That's deep. And I'm glad we're talking about business right now because we we were even talking about this on the phone the other day where you're you're like, you know, a lot of people think in business if I made $600,000 mm-hmm. over the year that that looks like I made 60 bands each month or 50 bands each month, right? I want to talk about the ebbs and flows of business Ooh. as well. Ooh. Um a lot of people don't understand that there's sometimes where you're in your season, you're in your bag, mm-hmm. like you making money, but then sometimes it's like, like it's not your season right now, bro. Like your sales just not converting, bro. And that's and that's the part about entrepreneurship that many people don't talk about, you know, because a season don't just last like the weather. Right. Some seasons last for four months, nine months. If you're from Chicago, eight months, you know, if you're from Chicago, it's cold. Yeah, I got, mostly yeah, I got an eight month winter. That's crazy. Yeah, yeah it's that. cold. Right. But those three months is, is the best. beautiful. It make living there all worth it. It make living there all worth it. I don't know. man. I got to see what the three months hit dog. Because eight months of cold. Fuck that. But to the point of seasons. Mm hmm. And this is where I think, you know, proper preparation prevents poor performance. You got to properly prepare for those seasons. When it's sunny, prepare for when it rain. When shit is going good in life, when shit is going good in your business, prepare for when it rains. Or prepare for when it don't rain, depending on your perspective and how you view the analogy. And so, bro, I've been in positions, man, where I had to pay people out of my personal pocket. That's a different level of responsibility when you got to make sure somebody else get paid so they can pay their mortgage, Mm -hmm. so they can buy their kids food. I done been in that position, bro, where I had to pay people out of my personal pocket, not out of the business, right? Out of my personal pocket to keep the business going. But thankfully, proper preparation prevents poor performance. So... How long can you can you stick it out through that through that dry season? Do you have the funds set aside? Do you have the funds set aside? Are you aside? managing your business money right? Are you doing the the tragic mistake of bank account accounting? That's the thing we try to get people away from, man. Have all your money in one account is a no go. <laughs> do not do not that shit. All. Or are you mentally stable? That's, that's another, another aspect. That's another big one for business. Cause if you you not mentally stable, your business is not gonna be stable. Bro, the hard the the toughest time to start a business is when you're not mentally stable, right? And part of you being mentally stable, you got to be financially stable, right? The worst time to start a business is when you're in survival mode. That's a fact. You can't even think straight. You in panic mode. Yeah, all the time. All the time. Every dollar you getting, you got to pay a bill. Every dollar you getting, you got to go do this. You ain't even giving the, the dollar the opportunity to go make another dollar for you. That is a fact. And, and, and partnerships, that. right? Mm. To, to, to go back to partnerships. The reason why um, that was a that was a $80,000 plus lesson for me. You know, um, I lost over $80,000 last year, bro. Damn. Yeah, through through bad partnerships, and I I just wanted to revisit that, you know, just so people know that it's real. Like we did not up here just I'm not up here just talking to you and saying hey follow a system. Like no, I lost eighty 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 thousand dollars for stepping off your path and for stepping off my system. And all the same things you just shared was getting so getting blinded off the fact that like okay this is how I do things, but yeah. because of who this person is and. That, that's a major lesson right there, especially yeah. with partnerships. Like the, I'm glad you shared that about vetting, especially that thing about mindsets, because I mm. think that's something that is is very underlooked. Like, yeah, you can go into business with 
your person, friends yeah. and people that you like. But if your mindset about things ain't the same, it's always going to create some friction somewhere down the line. We can't. And it looks different at every phase, right? At the phase you're currently in, that looks like losing eighty thousand dollars. As somebody that's getting started out, it may just look like, okay, we got to go our separate ways. It's, it's just, but the, at the end of the day, keeping that vetting people part, you shouldn't just hop into anything headlong. You should take the time, court the people. That's something that we've been working on more. Mm -hmm. Like, just yeah. like, we can't just hop into business with this person. Let's. Fill them out for a minute. Let's observe their ass. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. See how they move. What they talk about. Take their ass out to lunch and dinner and shit. But 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 how long is that process? Is it a, is it how? At what point do you cross the threshold and say, okay, I know who that person is? Mm. Because somebody could be a different person when you're not doing business with them, but when you start doing business with them, they totally different. It is a fact. You see, you see a whole new side that you never even saw before. You like, damn, where that come from? Hmm. So, so how do we clearly define, you know, if there's somebody that we can truly trust? I like you, I know you, but can I truly trust you? How do we do that? Hmm. How do we get there? It's almost like you got to put people in a position where you. Exemplify mm. some small a small amount of trust in a sense mm. in a way that you know won't be harmful to you. Exactly. You can't you can't give them the whole thing, right? Exactly. Looking like um like vesting. If you're getting somebody in your company, it's like okay, you want to join the company, you want to you want to eventually be a fourth or a quarter owner of the company. Well, I'm not gonna just give you the 25 percent off the rip. You got to work for that. Right. Like okay, you want to work with us. We'll do a conditional thing where it's like, we'll give you 3% year building over year. And if you produce these results as promised, now you can become this person. But it can't, it, it's like, it's not like a jump off the cliff. It's almost like just a, let's take baby steps. Mm. We can't, we, okay, yeah, we may, we may like this person. Like, so we may know them, but we may like them. But in order to figure out if we can really trust them, we got to put some trust in them, but not. Oh, just throwing man. everything in them is like blindly trusting motherfuckers. That's how you get burned. That's how you get burned, bro. Follow your system. What's your system? Man, bro, my system, first things first, I operate with the highest level of integrity, period. Period. If we doing business and a business, the deal go bad, I'm going to let you know right away. I'm going to communicate effectively, Right. I'm not trying to fix shit in the background before I tell you. And then when you tell me, you tell me that the deal went bad six months ago. Eight months ago. Yeah, nah, that's crazy. Because now I'm mad. <laughs> now I'm mad. <laughs> like, bitch, you could have been told this. We could have been figured something out. We could have been figured it out. So the first thing is you got to operate with the highest level of integrity. That's, that's the first thing in my system. Mm -hmm. Right? Because when I do that, I know that the universe... I know that God is going to give me that back in return. And everybody deserves honesty anyway. Because it's the, you, you plan with their finances. So the first thing is integrity. The second thing is the communication piece. You got to have an open line of communication. And a lot of people, they can't communicate when stuff ain't working out. It's easy to tell somebody when stuff is going good. Oh, man, we just made blah, blah, blah. It's hard to say we just lost three grand, two grand. The deal ain't working out. But you got to be that same person all the way through. Mm -hmm. You got to be that same person all the way through, man. You can't just be. It's just like motivation. You know what I'm saying? People wake up motivated one day, and the next day they're not motivated no more. Like Jayla said the other day. Yeah. He, it started raining. It was cold outside. Gym attendance cut in half. Right. What's, you, you was motivated, but did you have a discipline to follow through? That's, and me personally, now, nah, I've adapted. Determination over motivation. Oh, yeah. If I'm determined to reach this goal, I don't give a fuck how I'm feeling. I'm going to figure it out. Exactly. Exactly. The third of my system, you got to be disciplined in your business practices. Mm. You got to be disciplined in your business practices, man. You, you, you got to. If you ain't disciplined in your business practices, you ain't, you ain't running no business. You so let, let's talk about it. What does discipline look like in your business practices? Is this like we're producing a consistent result or we this is how we handle clients? What does that look like? All of the above. All of the above. 
being disciplined in your business practice could just be being fully present every day. Doing it consistently. And doing it consistently. You can bring personal stuff, you know, over into a client conversation with your attitude. Mm -hmm. And that's a disease that a lot of people don't even realize is an actual disease. Your attitude and how you view things and how you treat people. Right? And so you, you got to be disciplined in your business practice. How do you be disciplined in your business practice? Put some money to the side. Have some cash reserves. For every dollar you make, maybe you need to save 10%, 30%. Mm -hmm. You're going to have to pay taxes. So put some money back for that. That's being disciplined in your business practices. Mm -hmm. Because what happens when you get the unexpected invoice? What happens? You scrambling if you had you got bad practices. You scrambling if you got bad practices. You got to be disciplined in your business practices. And you got to deliver. Right? If we say, hey, we're going to turn this thing around for you within seven to ten business days, turn turn around in five. Whatever your turnaround time is, you want to, what they say, you want to over deliver, over deliver, under, under promise. promise. You want to keep, you, you want to develop a, a, a good system? Do that. Do that. Over deliver and under promise. I ain't never met somebody who got mad they got something early that they wanted. <laughs> You're right. I was just telling him about some stuff with issues. Never. With Justin. I was like, yo, I tell these people they're going to get this money in this time, but I know it's going to get that sooner. Right. And they're always happy. Always happy. Always. You got to be disciplined in your business practice, man. And another thing about being disciplined in your business practice, going back to vetting folks out. Because at some point, as your business scale, you may be looking to hire. Mm -hmm. And when you need talent, when you really need talent, it's easy to get off your system. It is. It's easy to get off your system. Because now you're trying to fill this gap Hustle in the business. Fast. Right? Now you're trying to fill this gap in the business that you, you ain't even thinking about, okay, does this person have the same or share the same values as me? Is this person going to work hard? At is they going to work hard? Am I going to have to micromanage them? Am I going to have to micromanage them? Yeah. Right? Are they going to show up? Are they going to bring drama into this? Are they going to be gossiping all the time? Or are they going to be a team player? Mm -hmm. So you got to be disciplined in all things, man. And that's why discipline is probably the number one skill set that most wealthy people have in common. They're disciplined. They ain't motivated. They woke up every day and it was consistent. Something heavy for your mind oh, yeah. right there. So, Gene, I did have another question. And E, can you uh can you pause the the timer thingy? And it's gonna go off on us in a second. Appreciate it. Um, now we were talking about credit earlier. Uh, we talked about business credit, how people you know making some follies with it. But I did want to talk about like some of the tax advantages to using credit and business credit instead of like paying stuff with debit wise. Absolutely, you should always be using a business if if your credit is in shape. Mm -hmm. If your credit is not in shape, recognize and know that credit can always be repaired, rebuilt, and restored, right? Those are the three R's of credit. And so you should always be using your business credit card if you have some good established credit. Why? Because if you got a good business credit card, you're going to get points, right? I like spending money knowing I'm going to get something in return. Mm -hmm. If I'm just spending my business debit card all the time, I'm not getting anything in return. Not at all. At all. And I don't have enough protection as if I would have mm. leveraging a business credit card. Because if somebody hacked that account, it's different than somebody hacking that exactly. account. Exactly. Because they spent the bank's money. They spent the bank money, bank going to get it back. Bank. They spent oh, your they, money. Tough titties, niggas. So you, consumer, <laughs> you know, what <laughs> Sorry, websites Tommy. did you put your credit card in? You know? Excuse me, your debit card in. So... Having, having business credit, bro, is, is pivotal because at some point, the reason why we're in business is because we're separating ourselves from the thing that actually generates the income. Mm -hmm. So if we want to continue down that road of separating ourselves, then we got to figure out how we can establish a lifeline or a, um, a flow of currency for the business that is not associated with us at all. And having access to credit, 
Bro, that's a game changer. That's a game changer. What do you do in that dry season when the money isn't coming in? How do you keep the business going? How you keep payroll going? How you keep payroll going? You might got to use a business credit card. Mm-hmm. You might have to use a business credit card just to keep the fucking lights on. And that's why having some form of business credit is important, bro. Because that business credit will save you when, a, when that business income can't. And, and I, I, I kind of want to drill down on the David's question. I know he acts like the advantages with taxes. Um, and correct me if I'm wrong. Are you talking about like how a loan is not taxed versus using your personal cash is? It, to a degree, yeah, kind of. Okay. Yeah. Oh yeah, loans, bro. When they, when, when they, when the government came out with loans, that was the, that was the easiest thing for folks to get rich. That's the easiest thing for folks to get rich, bro, because loans are not taxable, just like with real estate, right? So everybody's in here familiar with the bird method, you know, mm-hmm. right? You can buy a distressed property, right? Mm-hmm. Rehab yeah. it. Right, rent it out, rent it out and refinance, refinance and, repeat. and repeat. Right, it's the same thing almost in business outside of the real estate space. Right, because I can now get access to capital that I'm not going to get taxed on, mm-hmm. and this is why the wealth gap is so is so huge because the average consumer, the average taxpayer, doesn't know how to get access to capital. And with business owners, what they do is they get access to capital and then they use that capital to produce income. So they got money that was never taxed because they got access to capital. They had the coaching and training, the education to get the access to the capital. Mm -hmm. And then they leverage that to go do what? Produce income. And in the process of producing income, what did they do? They generate expenses. Right. Expenses that are tax deductible. They generate expenses that are tax deductible. So although they're generating income by leveraging the capital that they receive from the bank, but they're also getting a ton of expenses in the pursuit of income that's driving their tax liability down. Mm -hmm. Right. And then they rinse and repeat and they keep doing the same thing over and over and over and over and over and over. And that's how they never pay any tax or they may pay some tax, but they're not paying what the average person is paying because they're leveraging loans credit. and they're leveraging credit. Right. And loans are not taxable. That's good. Appreciate you sharing that. Cause that's, that's kind of where I was going with it. Like in a sense, it's like, how do they, how can you use that? Cause I know that's one of the things that you hear about a lot of these major corporations, they'll use credit to keep the lights on and not spend their cash on hand. Like Apple, we hear they got what? Like, I forgot how yeah, much. Stupid money. Billions of dollars just sitting aside because they don't use their fucking money. They Stupid money. They don't need it. Yeah. What, they, what they need their money for? I ain't got to touch my For what? When they can go Goldman use, Sachs going to go give me a loan anyway. They're going to they gonna give me a loan anyway. They're going to give me tax-free money, and all I'm going to do is generate a shit ton of expenses to generate more money, to get the bank account even more fatter, even more juicier. And I'm not going to pay no tax on it anyway because now, now that I got more money, I can do what the government wants me to do, which is creating jobs. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Right? So they know the government is going to give me another tax benefit because I'm creating jobs. I'm stimulating the economy. Mm -hmm. Right? I'm helping drive down inflation right i'm putting money in people's pocket and not only that but in most cases we have a business that's actually changing the way that we do business because technology is growing everybody as everybody in this stage of the game bro they they in some way operate in the te- in, in the tech space in some way tech is involved in everything that we do mm-hmm. it's involved in everything that we do yeah, definitely at this point at this point. So we just got to figure out, man, how do we get on the other side of the table? How do we get access to capital so that we can generate expenses in a pursuit of income and pay less on the income that we make, but also make sure that we're still in position to go get more capital? And that's why real estate 
is so important to this whole tax thing. Because what happens is a lot of people, they're just trying to find deductions, mm -hmm. right? Oh, meals. Oh, internet. Oh, um, this, this hoodie for marketing and advertising. Oh, supplies. But like I said, I'm a big proponent of finding deductions that can fuel your future. Mm. So why not go buy some cash flow? Why not go buy a real estate property that you can accelerate the depreciation on and offset the income that you're generating in your business or offset the income that you're making from your W-2 job? And not only that, what happens is the bank will add the depreciation back to your income. So when you go to go get some funding, the money's still there. So how do we make, and this is what I tell folks to do all the time. If you're looking for a, an accountant, right, a tax accountant, the number one question is, how can I maximize my deductions while also making sure that I remain profitable on paper as well? That's a very good That's question. That's question. the number one question. Because you can get all these write-offs and go get the business credit card and go to the, to the Beyonce shit and write that off, right? But how, how do we move strategically, right? How is that, that, that's not fueling your future at all. That's not fueling your future at all. But real estate gives us the opportunity to make sure that we remain profitable on paper. Excuse me, yeah, profitable on paper, mm -hmm. right, to the bank. But we pay no tax. What what is that called again? Because I remember that was what I was talking about earlier. Was that what is it called? Accelerate accelerated depreciation. Accelerated depreciation. And the way that you get accelerated depreciation is by doing a cost segregation study. There we go. That's the name of the. You said shit. cost segregation study. A cost segregation study. So how does what, what is that? I explain that. So yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm confused we, now. We we gonna break it down. We gonna break it down. We are gonna keep it real simple, right? We are gonna keep it real simple. What a cost segregation study is, so we're all familiar with the regular depreciation, right? 27 yeah. and a half, 39, whatever, right? We're familiar with the regular depreciation. But then you got those things that are inside the home, inside the investment property that has a useful life of 15 years or less. Some things outside the investment property too, like a roof. Mm -hmm. You don't have to replace it every 10 to 15 years. Like a roof. Like the electrical, like the appliances, like the lighting fixtures, cabinets, like the cabinets, like the PVC. These are all things that we can accelerate the depreciation on and give you a tax deduction. Hmm. And this is why real estate has to be in the portfolio. And not only just having real estate in the portfolio, but you want to you want to be a real estate professional. When you're a real estate professional, that opens up so many opportunities for you to leverage real estate to offset your personal income. Got you. Right. Because when you when you when, you, when you're at one hundred and fifty thousand mm -hmm. dollars, you're capped up to one hundred fifty thousand dollars. You're capped to twenty five thousand dollars a year that you can take in passive losses. Right. So you got active income and you got passive income. Right. The government came up with passive passive activity loss rules that says, hey, you guys can only deduct twenty five thousand dollars on your passive income to offset. And this is all your earned income, income right? all passive income to offset your earned income. But the loophole is to become a real estate professional. When you become a real estate passive, professional, active. once you become a real estate professional, now, oh, we can t we we can take we take that that cap off that bucket off. Mm. So, how do I become a real estate professional, Eugene? How do I do that? Right, you get a license. You can get a license, or if you're married, your spouse can get a license. Mm. If you're married, filing joint, we just need one person on the return. We just need one person on the return. Oh, that's that's sauce right there. So is that the only way to get the real estate? Absolutely not. Professional designation? Absolutely not. Absolutely not. So the law says that you have to materially participate for 750 hours or more in that real trader business. 
So we need to participate for 750 hours or more in real estate. How do we do that, Eugene? How do I prove to the IRS, to the government, that I can I contributed or I materially participated mm -hmm. for 750 hours? You got to log it. You got to have support and documentation for every deduction that you take, right? You can't just be taking deductions without having, you know, supporting documentation. You might get away with yeah. it on a small level. You might get away with it. They audit that ass. But, you know, like he said, when they come looking for you and they find you because they will find you. Uncle Sam likes to let them cases build up on you. Oh, yeah, they will find you. It's only a matter of time. Are you prepared? And that's why our proper preparation prevents poor performance. So that's one way to do it, mm -hmm. right? We have to materially participate for 750 hours or more in that real trade of business, and we have to log it. And that's for the year, 750? That's for the year. It's a lot of fun. We have to log it, right? So when you go to the property, log it. There's trackers out there that you can leverage, right? My team has resources that we can share with you to make sure that you're logging things appropriately, Right. When you go to the property, log it, take photos, do the stuff that, you know, you, you should probably be taking photos anyway, mm -hmm. especially at this stage in the game, because content is everything. Right. You may inspire somebody through you going to the property. Thanks. Right. And it's Black History Month. We should be pushing the needle forward anyway to build wealth. So that's the first way. The second way is they came up with an exception. So what's the exception? Airbnb. Short-term rentals. So that makes you a real estate professional without the 750 hours? That can make you a real estate professional without the 750. Well, wait, there's more. Without the 750. Wow, okay. All you have to do is rent out your property to a renter on Airbnb for seven days or less, but more than 14 days throughout the year. For seven days or less, but more than 14 days throughout the year. The year and we can qualify you as a real estate professional that way so you it's not passive because they're not if they stay more than seven days that makes them a tenant you get dicey okay you get dicey because i know you said less than seven days for a consecutive stay but more than 14 for the year exactly exactly that's why y'all need an EA on your team, man. That's, that's, that's that intricate stuff. Cause like, yeah, and yeah. I did want to clear something up with cost segregation study. That shit been burning in my head. So whenever you do cost segregation studies and accelerate your depreciation, mm -hmm. are you then waiving like the standard depreciation that you would do? Is it kind of like a tax situation? Exactly. Like a, a standard deduction versus itemized? Exactly. That's, that's exactly what it is? Exactly. Okay. So and, and I'm glad you bring that up. So it, it got to make sense. Depending on the person, mm -hmm. right? If I got a client that's generating a ton of ton of revenue, okay, for you, yeah, let's 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 do some accelerated depreciation. Or if I got a client that says, hey, you know, I don't plan on having this property for loan. You know, maybe they're getting ready to sell it in a year or two years. Okay, maybe we don't accelerate the depreciation because when you sell it, there's this thing called depreciation recapture. Oh, mm. Okay. Right. There's this thing called depreciation recapture where it can, you know, it, it can bite you a little bit, right? So we got to be very, very um, meticulous and specific on what deductions we take and when. But in real estate, we should be buying and holding anyway. That's how we pass down assets. Buy and hold, mm -hmm. right? Right. You just, yeah, all right, man, I'm, I'm goddamn blown it, away. There's one more part that I want to make. So with the um, Airbnb part, it doesn't have to be like a Airbnb unit. You can do this with a personal home, correct? Absolutely. Absolutely. So even, even if you don't own a full portfolio, you can still Yeah, even if you got a single it. family home. It don't got to be multifamily. Arbitrage too? If you do arbitrage. Not arbitrage. Okay. Not arbitrage. You do have to own it. Okay. Yeah, you do have to own it to, to take depreciation. Got you. Absolutely. Makes sense, though. Absolutely. That's fire, man. Hell yeah. High level tax conversations. Hell yeah. Every time G come on, he don't disappoint, man. I already Bro, 
This what we got. We got to get, get like a little gene pop up section. Hell yeah! <laughs> and I can just call it. Hey, Gene, what you doing? <laughs> Let's but, talk some shit. <laughs> but nah, man, Eugene, definitely appreciate you joining us today, man. It's been great chopping it up with you. So we all gonna pivot into some of our last few questions. Um, for me, my favorite question to ask everybody: What are you doing right now to secure your wealth? Oh man, that's that's important, bro. So. Um, another thing that we talk about in the tax planning space is having a trust, you know, and um, making sure that you protect the assets that you accumulate. And the last thing that you you want is for your assets to be um, at the hands of a judge determining, you know, who gets what and how much, you know. And like a lot take of off us, and his family. Yeah, bro. Like like take off like um, Chadwick Boseman, Chad, Chadwick Prince. You know, Michael Jackson is still making money to this day because he had the proper paperwork. Think about that. A document. He had the proper paperwork, bro. And um, for me, man, it's just making sure I got the right paperwork and I'm structured correctly. I'm structured correctly, right? You, you ain't pierced nothing, right? Ain't no corporate veils getting ain't pierced no corporate around veils, this joint. Ain't no corporate veils. And, and, and it's on that point, and I, not to go too off topic, but... Even on the real estate piece, on real estate piece, what happens is a lot of people think that just because they bought the property in a business name that the asset is protected, but it's not. People can still come after the business, and if the business owns whatever the business owns, those assets could be at risk. If you but got when we 10 shift properties on one LLC, they all at risk. Yeah. When we shift things to a trust, mm -hmm. certain things you can't do. Mm -hmm. Right. Can't sue a land trust. Can't sue a land trust. Can't sue a land trust. And that's just a trust that owns property. Like it's a trust that owns real estate. Damn. So we gotta be we gotta make sure our paperwork correct. We gotta make sure our paperwork correct. That'd be the answer to that question. I got three questions for you now. First one. Are you frugal or are you a flexor? Don't lie. I'm frugal, bro. <laughs> I had my year. I had my year. Uh, 2021 was, dude. And I was talking about this last night with X. You know, um, it's, it's, man, you can get high on your success quick. You know, you can get high off your success and really kick it and like blow some. I, I don't, I spent some money. Um, and 2022, beginning of 2022, I, I was just like, man, I spent all this money, but. You know, I ain't really had shit to show for it. Mm -hmm. You know what mm -hmm. I'm saying? Um, I had some stuff to show for it, but not nothing worth mentioning on what, what stuff we talking about today. Mm -hmm. Yeah, some um, experiences and whatnot, but I mean, yeah. like it. Yeah, I had some experiences. You know, I, I, I fucked some money off. Um, and I realized that, man, like, nah, I'm, you know, I ain't there yet. You know, I, I, ain't, I ain't there yet. I got, pl I got so much more time to continue building before I even start entertaining moving like that again mm -hmm. um so I, I would say i'm frugal bro but i do have my moments too where i treat myself you know I, I treat myself four times a year and i get a deduction by doing so hey that's what's up dog. that's very important too because i mean it's like finding that balance in it right yeah it's not like you don't want to you don't wanna, when we say frugal people start thinking like penny pinching a miserly person that they live mm -hmm. only for money no, you just responsible with your yeah, money and, and you make sure you're taking care of yourself. That bro, enjoyment piece is important. It is, bro. I ain't never seen nobody get rich pinching pennies. You know? Never. You know? Like that one nigga that was cooking them fucking eggs on that damn car. Oh, that man. nigga, that was that crazy, dog. That wildin'. And I know he wasn't fucking rich. I'll tell you that <laughs> much. <laughs> um, my second question, you kind of already answered it, is, you know, what are you doing to protect your wealth? So you talked about the trust and everything. Um, my last question though is, do you have life insurance? Absolutely. Absolutely. Said, of course. What do you mean? You I'd gotta have life insurance. You you gotta have some form of life insurance, man. That's 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 important, bro. And that code that connects back to the trust. You know, and making sure that you got some proper estate planning. Mm -hmm. It's everything, bro. You you gotta have some proper estate planning, you know. So absolutely I got life insurance, bro. That's what's up. Well, Gene, appreciate you for coming on again, my brother. Um, let the people know where they can tap in with you, where they can follow you. And if they would like to actually, you know, 
access your tax firm and become a client, what do they have to do as well? Absolutely. You can find me on uh, all social media platforms, underscore, underscore, Mr. Marshall. That's two underscores. Make sure y'all don't get caught by the fake pages. Exactly. I got plenty of those. Uh, So two underscores, Mr. Marshall. And the best way to get in contact with the firm is to click the link that's going to be in the show notes. Right? Click the link that's going to be in the show notes. That's going to give you access to the team. Or go to blackwealthrenaissance.com slash taxes. Or that. Right? Whatever you got to do, just do it. Um, but that's that's the best way. And the link that BWR got, that's the link where you're going to get direct access to me. Right? I'm going to make sure that you and I can have a powerful conversation. You're going to have a powerful 30-minute conversation. Yeah. That's hey, what's up, my brother. If you done tapped into this podcast, you already know the type of value. We only scratching the surface on this pod. So that's what y'all to know. This man dive into something. He has the knowledge and skills. So, hey. I, I suggest they go ahead and do that. If you're looking for do somebody that. to get your taxes right, especially you're an entrepreneur, you man. He, he's not somebody that just does taxes. You're also in business. so Hell yeah. So I want to say thank you to all the listeners who listen week in and week out. Appreciate y'all so much. Thank y'all for helping grow our show to where it's currently at. Um, once again, y'all make sure y'all tap into um, Magnolia Tax Services for all your tax needs this tax season. Um, I want to say y'all be on the lookout for our event. Uh, might be doing a little small pop-up in Houston. So y'all definitely get those tickets. Um, the way you'll be able to access those tickets is by texting EVENTS to 337 4 what. Five four five five, five seven, seven 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 eight. Seven, yeah, I haven't seven, said it in a while. Eight three three seven four five five seven 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 eight. Yes, sir. I used to have a little rhyme, but I ain't gonna be corny no more. <laughs> yeah, but no, definitely y'all tap in with us. Um, also, I know we mentioned funding on this episode as well. If you're looking to get funding for your business, you're trying, you're in the process trying to grow, scale, and you need funding. Uh, Mess with us and our partners here at U Leverage Capital. Got the business credit builder. Step by step process gonna walk you through. Go to blackwealthrenaissance.com slash funding and we'll get you right. But um that's that's it really on my end, man. I don't know if you got anything else nah, for the that's people. All I got, my brother. Uh, so until next time, this is Black Wealth Renaissance signing out. Peace.